the papers, the journalist and author Gemma Forty, and the broadcaster Afwa Hagen. Uh, lovely to see you guys. We're getting our money's worth this morning. Um, Gemma, to you first. Page two of the Mirror. They describe Boris Johnson as shameless. Why? Well, it is pretty shameless. On the 25th of May, he was apologising to the country and saying that he would uh, take accountability for what went on with Partygate. But here he is, two days later, diluting the ministerial code and blocking his independent ethics chief, Lord Guy, from being able to trigger an inquiry. So, in other words, he's about to be investigated and he's making sure that he doesn't have to resign. The thing is, this framework has always relied upon integrity, really, and decency. When Cameron looked at it last, he was being aspirational, saying we must do better. And what Johnson's doing is diluting it and down and saying we don't have to. We, we can do a lot worse when it comes to standards. But in the past, MPs have resigned because they've broken the code. Liam Fox, Damian Green, there are quite a few. Um, Pretty Patel was forced to resign from a previous job in 2017. She broke it again um, and was found to have bullied but Johnson made her Home Secretary. And I think that says a lot about the standards that he does or doesn't want to conform to. Um, Afwa, take us inside the Times. And this, this, this deals with um, David Lammy, Labour politician, very prominent Labour politician, receiving a, a, a death threat, a racist uh, death threat, over Twitter. Now, look, as someone, as someone who has experienced a couple of death threats, and obviously not racist, but death threats, you, know, you try to be quite blasé about them, but, you know, they do get under your skin. Oh, absolutely. And a very scary thing that happened to him. So this is David Lammy, the Shadow Foreign Secretary, and he said he won't be silenced um, after a far-right uh, racist was given a prison sentence for sending him a death threat via Twitter. So this is Glenn Broadpent of Leeds, and he said, are you hanging off a tree, monkey boy? You will hang from a lamppost if you're not careful, uh, implying that David Lammy would be lynched. Uh, and I think it's great, actually, that this person has been given a sentence, has been given a fine, because we need to make an example. And what we need to, and what social media giants need to do, what the police need to do, is they need to make it impossible for people to send these kind of racist comments and death threats via social media. And we need to put a message out there that this will not be tolerated, cannot be done, and should not be done. There's so many people, keyboard warriors out there, who send vile racist comments, vile death threats, sexist, misogynistic, just abuse to anyone who they frankly don't agree with because they're behind a pseudonym or behind a fake account. Keyboard warriors do this all the time. I've had plenty of these. I think it's about time the police took them seriously and about time that social media companies took them seriously as well. So good for David Lammy saying that he won't be silent. Uh, Gemma, a uh, concerning story in the Times. Uh, interest rates could go up as high as 3%. Of course, the, the inter setting of interest rates and the control of the Bank of England, everything else in the, the control of the Chancellor, and it's because of the Chancellor's actions we could see uh, interest rates going up. Well, that's right. I guess there's no such thing as a, a free lunch. Rishi Sunak has announced his very welcome package to help households, which I believe was absolutely necessary and, and better late than never, um, especially with the windfall tax on the energy firms. But actually, th there has been some concern about it not being means tested because, of course, all this money flooding in the economy... It does mean it will have to be paid back at some point or there will be a hit and that's going to look like inflation. Now, interest rates going up to 3%, people will remember them being far higher than that in the past and we've got used to them being very low. But in the past, most people could get a fairly average salary, borrow five times the amount and get on the housing ladder and, and the world just doesn't look like that anymore with house prices so inflated. So I wouldn't want to be the Chancellor right now. What a maelstrom he's facing. Of course, Ukraine impacting on everything Thing. Of course, COVID, of course, our decision to leave the EU. There is a, a, a whole cocktail of things to conspire to make the economy the biggest story there is out there. And I think it's going to continue to be for, for the foreseeable. Uh, for your next story is page 20 of, of the mirror. Now, as, as, as someone who works in broadcasting, I could not really work from home. I need all these cameras and I certainly need a ton of makeup in the morning. I would like to, however, as I've just discovered my car's about to get locked in the car park uh, here at Sky Towers. I'd love to be able to work from home and it appears that, you know, plenty of people share that view. Yes, plenty of people still sharing that view. However, um, more people aren't going back to the office. So three and four of us, that's 75%, are going to work at least once a week. 
still working from home, however, and that's up from a month ago when it was two thirds of people uh, were working from home. Um, and COVID infection rates have been falling definitely. Uh, Fifty-four percent of adults are still using a face covering outside their home. That's down from sixty-five percent of those polled in April, and less people taking lateral flow tests as well. Twenty-three percent compared to 34% in the last polling. So I think it shows that people are feeling more confident about going out and about, about getting back to work, doing more days in the office, feeling the need not necessarily to use lateral flow tests and using masks less as well. So yes, the great back to work thing is on. Uh, Gemma, you've got 30 seconds. And we've discovered who Banksy is, or maybe not. Well, apparently. So poor Billy Gannon, a, a councillor from uh, West Wales, I believe, <laughs> He has got this existential crisis going on because everybody thinks he's Banksy, but they also think, therefore, that he's lied about his age. So he's spending his entire life saying, I am not Banksy, but the more he says it, the more they don't believe him. And actually, it's got to the point he's resigned from being councillor. So there is some sort of body value within this job, but also part of me feels rather sorry for him. I don't think he is Banksy. But we'll never know. We will never know. Uh, Gemma, Afla, it's been lovely to see you both. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. You guys stay where you are. I am not Banksy.